Hello for the screening table. We already choose three material for we compared, which are LDPE, PLA, and PE. And the structure requirement that we choose are price, density, and body energy, uh, transparency, and fragile toughness. This is scoring table. For scoring table, one is the worst and ten is the best. We can see that LDPE get the highest score, so we will take LDPE as our material for our product. It is because it has low price, low density, and the structure is translucent. Hi, my name is Rudo Malen, and I'm currently uh, talking about the non-metallic manufacturing process of the bobber. Okay, uh, the first part will be the extruder. So the extruder, uh, a plastic resin will go through with 0 0.3175 cm in diameter. At the beginning of the process, these platelets are introduced into the molding machine, known as the extruder. At one end of the extruder is a hopper into which the platelets are dumped. The hopper feeds the platelet into a long heated barrel, and this barrel is equipped with a screw mechanism, which pushes the plastic forward. At the end of the barrel is a stainless steel sheet die that can produce a sheet to 10 feet weight. Okay, then the, the type of extruder is used is a single screw, extruder, single screw extruder with vacuum, grooved with feeding section, and the screw design will be a barrier screw. The compression, compression ratio will be 5 to 1, and the cylinder temperature will be 170 degrees to 200. Degrees Celsius, whereas the melt temperature of the LDPE will be 180 to 210 degrees Celsius. As we've been extruded, the thickness of the plastic that's coming out will be 25 to 150 micron thick. As it goes through the die and get through, the the sheet are then uh, as the molten resin is squeezed through the die, it is shaped into a sheet which is then processed further. Depending on the process, the sheet can be laminated to another layer immediately, which is still warm and it can cool and laminate later. In either case, after being extruded, the sheet passes through a series of stainless steel roller known as a three roll finish or a three roll step. These roll are 10 to 16 inches in diameter and internally cooled with water. So it's actually cool the, plas the plastic while it's actually um, compressing it to size. As the plastic sheet exits the die, it enters the nib, the point where the two top two rollers, top two rollers meet. The sheet is pulled in by motion of rollers and is passed through the top, middle, and the bottom roller. These rollers cool the sheet while helping it to maintain the correct. As for the one method of creating these egg pockets, are using a rotating belt as the forming setting. This belt a number of holes spread across it as abstract sheet moves along the that the suction is applied. So the barrel actually has a suction and the suction is applied applied from a vacuum source to the hole in the belt. The air pressure differential causes the plastic to stretch down into the hole on the belt, thus creating a series of pockets. So this is actually can be called as blow molding because the air will be pushed through the middle and it gets stuck it gets sucked in by the belt, which has holes in it. So uh, these are the non-metallic process for the making of bubble wrap. Hi, my name is Iratu Putri Bentimo Melissa. I will present about the flowchart of process of the bubble wrap. First D is raw material. Cushioning laminate is primarily made of plastic film or thin shape form from the rest from the resin, which is polyethylene. Polyethylene is full form well and inexpensive. They can be cast into strong flexible film and have the ability to hold A without leaking. The other additive is PE film are formed with a variety of additive mixed with the base polymer in order to modify their properties and to facilitate processing. <coughs> the, the second is plastic the second step is plastic compounding and sheet extrusion. Polyethylene resin is heated with a mix, a mix with additive 
Then the mixture is then melted, melted form into the small pellet. After that, an extruder. Hopper feed the pellet into the heated barrel. Then barrel push the plastic forward. Then the resin melt. That easily falls out through the opening in the die. The molten resin is squeezed through the die. It is shaped into a sheet. The third step is lamination. The process used to seal the, pro the two sheets together in such a wing that trap air bubbles. Uniform placement of the this bubble across the face of the sheet can be achieved by stretching the stop tracks sheet in, in a designed pattern. The fourth process, the fourth step is after the minute is complete, the sheet are cooled, if necessary, by open or forced air system. The next step is finishing. After the cushioning, the minute is completed, the sheet material is cut into the appropriate size, which is which is we know as a sleeting. The next, after finishing process, we have final inspection, which is check we check the product. Uh, to make sure there is no defect. If we have a defect, we have to recycle to the plastic compounding and sheet extrusion process. The next step is packing. The laminate may be may be packaged and sold on the roll or the sheet form. The last step is store. The product will be stored in the same place before to the distributions. Thank you. Hello Prof, my name is Arvin and as for my part, I will be explaining about the manufacturing process selection strategy. In a process selection strategy, firstly, we have to consider all the manufacturing processes that can be involved. Secondly, we need to translate the design requirements. Thirdly, we need to do screening using constraints. Fourthly, we need to do ranking using objectives. Next, we need to seek for documentation. And lastly, we can be able to choose our final process choice. And as for the translation part, the function is to shape a thin plastic sheet in order to make the bubble wrap sheet. The constraints are, it should be able to withstand heat for lamination process and the plastic resin must be thermoplastic material. The objective is to minimize cost and the free variable is the choice of material. As for the screening part, we need to screen the manufacturing process which can be done on materials such as glasses, elastomers, thermoplastics, thermosets and polymer foams. And as for the ranking part, we need to minimize the cost and maximize the quality of the plastic sheet. And as for the seeking of documentation part, we need to do research on manufacturing defect which can lead to scrap and lost productivity. In a systematic process selection, we need to implement strategy using the seven process attributes which are material, shape, mass, section thickness, surface roughness, tolerance and economic batch size which is also known as cost. The data of these seven attributes will help us to create a table whereby the table will consist of a few manufacturing processes versus the seven attributes to help us select the best manufacturing process in order to make the plastic sheet for our bubble wrap. This is the table that we have created and the manufacturing process that we have considered are injection molding, blow molding, polymer casting and conventional machining. In order to make the plastic sheet for the bubble wrap, the material should be thermoplastic, shape should be flat, mass should be approximately 0.01 kg, the section thickness should be approximately 1 mm, the surface roughness should be approximately 0.1 to 0.5 micrometer, the tolerance should be approximately 0.1 mm, and the cost should be approximately 10 to the power of 5 to 10 to the power of 7 units. By referring to the data of the seven attributes, we have made a scoring and the highest score goes for the injection molding followed by blow molding and then conventional machining and lastly polymer casting holds the least score. So what we can conclude is injection molding is the best manufacturing process in order to make the plastic sheet for the bubble wrap. There are many advantages of bubble wrap packaging. The first one is, bubble wrap is an excellent insulator against impacts. Bubble wrap is exceedingly good at its primary function, to keep goods safe and secure during transit. Freight transit, unfortunately, often includes rough handling or bumps in the road. Thus, shippers protect their goods with bubble wrap. Its bubble of sealed air provides a flexible but durable cushion that forms a surprisingly sturdy barrier against impact. 
when double or triple up in layers and combined with a sturdy corrugated shipping box, it can protect goods from even severe Second, impacts. Second, bubble wrap is reusable. When you are done with your bubble wrap, don't throw it away. Bubble wrap can almost always be reused unless it's been significantly damaged. As long as most of the bubbles are intact, you are good to use your bubble wrap again and again to protect your most valuable goods in transit. This makes bubble wrap a much more eco-friendly option compared to some types of packaging that are difficult to reuse and it can offer a big potential cost savings as well. It's also great for companies that offer easy customer return as, it's, as it is simple to set up as part of a ready to Next, go return. Next, bubble wrap is lightweight. Bubble wrap is among the lightest void fill packaging materials. Its structure is mostly air with a few layers of ultra lightweight plastic for durability. That makes a seriously light packaging material that can translate to savings in shipping costs, especially if you are shipping in bulk. Less packaging means lower cost when shipping by weight, as well as potentially lower fuel cost when shipping large amounts of this. Bubble is a versatile. Bubble wrap can insulate and protect almost any kind of small cargo. It can easily be cut with scissors into almost any form you need, and large, and large sheets of it are malleable enough to effectively wrap and protect many kinds of oddly shaped cargo and its application outside shipping are wide as well. Some people even use it to insulate their, their windows in the summer. With a little bit of creativity, the possibilities are almost limitless. As with other plastic manufacturing processes, there are several key areas that must be closely controlled to ensure a quality product is produced. During the compounding process, the resin and additive must be added carefully to ensure the formula components are blended in proper ratio. During extrusion, it is critical that the resin is kept at the proper temperature. The flow rate of the polymer will vary according to its molecular weight and temperature. If the temperature is too cold, the resin will move through the dye properly. If the temperature is too high, the polymer may undergo thermal degradation. Overheat can cause chemical change in the resin, making it it unus unusable. After the extruder process is complete, the extruder must be properly cleaned. True cleaning is necessary before working with a different resin because tracer of the previous used resin can combinate the new batch. The dye cleaning is the best done while the machine is still warm and leftover resin can be easily scraped up. Other factors must also be monitored. For example, in certain methods of manufacturing, it is important that top and bottom plastic sheets respond to heat differently so, the, so that during the lamination process, one sheet distort, distorts but the other does not. For this type of operation, it is critical that the heat distortion of the two sheets differ by at least 77 degree Farage or problem will occur during lamination. In conclusion, we can say that bubble wrap is one of the primary packaging film application. Bubble wrap is made up from layers of low density polyethylene film which have been applied mostly in packaging and transporting of goods sectors. Although the invention of bubble wrap is from an accident, bubble wrap have been widely used around the globe. That is all from us for the presentation of the polymeric packaging film assignment. Thank you.